H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. It is bitwise czar. So, can someone wants to explain it uh, in the next class? I'll give five minutes for them. Can someone take the responsibility and just explain what is czar operator? Who wants to take? I'll give five minutes. So, I not only teach the topics here, I'll also make you to get the confidence. So, so I'll ask a weekly one person to explain some topic for five minutes. So, who will explain for this week? Uh, I want someone to explain bitwise or exclusive or. So, who wants to take this up? In the next class, they should explain this. Okay. So Sandhya wants to take this up. So so in the next class for five minutes, Sandhya will explain us what is bitwise czar. So I'm not explaining now. Thank you, Sandhya. So you can practice and then you can I'll you can I'll make you as presenter in the next class. You can explain to others. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll discuss on shift operator. So so now so till now we discussed on uh, arithmetic operators, relational operators, logical operators. We also discussed on bitwise operators. Now we are going to discuss on shift operators. So so this is also this is very simple. See now I have written. Uh, so let me explain this. So I have written six less than less than two. So this is uh, two times less than we call it as left shift operator, left shift operator. So the first one, the first number you have to convert to binary. So in shift operators, the first one you need to convert to binary. You need to convert to binary. So which is one one zero, one one zero. The left shift two means you have to move this to left side. So this is left side and this is right side. So left shift indicates you have to move this to two times left side and add zeros there. Okay. So and then you need to convert the total value to decimal. Very simple. Convert the first number to binary, and left shift two indicates move this to two times that side and add two zeros. Or blindly you can put two zeros. For example, if I ask you five left shift three. So the answer is for five, it is one zero one, and left shift three means you have to add three zeros, and you have to convert this to decimal. So two point zero, two point one, two square, two cube is eight, plus two point four, two point five, two point five is thirty two. So the answer is forty. So very simple. Five left shift three is forty. So let's try to verify that. Five left shift three. Let me go here. Five, left shift three. I should get forty now. Let's see whether I am correct or not. So I am compiling it. I am executing it now. See the answer. So you can see here that the answer is forty. Okay. So that is about uh, left shift operators. You just need to convert. You just need to convert to binary and add zeros. And right shift operator is something like you just need to remove the right side values. For example. Right shift six, right shift two means you you need to convert to binary and remove whatever is mentioned in the right shift. So two two digits you have to remove and remaining one you have to convert to decimal. For example, let me try to convert sixteen or seventeen to. Okay, let me try to uh, explain this value. So seventeen, right shift three. So let me explain this. So for 17, what I need to do here? So I need to uh, I need to write 17 here. I need to write two um, two eight zero sixteen. Remainder is one. Two four zero eight. Remainder is zero. Two two zero four. Remainder is zero. 
and two ones to remainder zero. So I need to write like this. So I need to write one triple zero one for seventeen one triple zero one. So right shift three indicates right shift three indicates I have to remove the right side three values. So let me remove them, and the answer is one zero one zero. If I convert to decimal, the answer is two four zero and two four one. So the answer is two. So seventeen right shift three. The answer is two. So let me try to do that. I'll go to my program. Seventeen right shift three. Is that the question? Yeah, seventeen right shift three. So the answer is two. So let me save it. Go to the command prompt and then compile again and then execute it. So the answer which I'm getting here is answer which I'm getting here is two. That is the answer which we got. So is it clear about left shift and right shift operator? Is it clear about shift operators? Ping me if it's clear. Okay. I see only couple of responses. I am not seeing the response from Jesse and Parimala. Um okay. So Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this is about shift operators. So let me ask one question and I'll see who will respond first. So Windows are Notepad. So So yeah, how it become um 10 becomes 2 is how are you getting uh, how come 10 becomes 2 is good question. So I just need to convert so this this is binary. I want to convert this to decimal. So if I want to convert this to decimal, I guess you missed my first class. So I need to write like this: zero into zero into two power one, and then one into two one into two square one into sorry zero into uh, two power zero, one into two power one. For example, if I want to convert one zero zero one into decimal, I have to write one into two power zero, and plus zero into two power one. And I need to write zero into zero into two square, and then here I need to write one into two cube, and then this is eight plus this is anyway zero, this is zero, this is one, so eight plus one, which is nine. Like this, yeah, okay. So, so now let me ask a question, and I I I want to see who will who will tell me first. Okay, so Windows are Notepad. So what is the answer for what is the answer for three left shift one? I'm not seeing any response still. It's, it's very simple. Three less than one. So you just need to I got one response from Bavik saying it's 12. Jesse, I got response 7. Padmini, I got response 6. I got all mixed responses. So, so let me explain this. So, for 3, the binary value is uh, what is the binary value of 3? It is 101. So, 101, 2 power 0, is it 101? No, not 101. For three, the answer uh, zero one one. I guess yeah, it is one one. For three, it is one one, and left shift one is very simple. I need to add a zero left side. I need to add so I need to move this left side. I need to add a zero here. So now now I need to convert this to decimal. So so two power zero, two power one, two square. So the answer is six. Yeah, the answer is six. I see mixed responses. So just blindly when you see left shift 1 or left shift 3 just blindly add three zeros at the right side like this you need to work so let me ask next question so until all of you respond to me correctly I'll continue this so what is the answer for what is the answer for 6 left shift 2 Oh no, I have it on the screen. 
so I got one response from Sandhya it's 24 okay let's verify from others I want to see the response from Jesse perfect perfect uh, thank you for answering so if you see here let me put uh, okay so I'll just explain it so for 6 I need to write like this 2 3's are remainder is 0 and 2 uh, 2 1's remainder is 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 and again I need to add 2 zeros so 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 square 2 cube is 8 2 power 4 is 16 so 16 plus 8 you don't need to write all this also blindly you can calculate so here 16 plus uh, 8 which is 24 okay okay great so now question to all of you again what is the answer for 3 right shift 4 this one let me see who will answer if you answer okay instant reply I got from Mauna yeah you're right uh, so any other answers yeah yeah so right shift means I have to remove the remove the values so now if I write for 3 the value is a 0 1 1 and I have to remove 4 from this means all all are gone all will be gone so the answer is 0 so so if someone asks you uh, uh, for for example in the exam if you see question like this 19 uh, right shift 20 you don't need to put your paper and pen you can blindly tell the answer is 0 because right 20 bits should go and definitely 19 will not have 20 bits 19 will maximum have around 5 to 6 because when you write like this uh, 19 when you convert to binary you will only get uh, so let let me see I don't want to calculator and I'll go to binary uh, decimal if I put 19 and click on binary I have only one double zero one one so so one double zero one one is for 19 and I have to remove 20 bits from this I only have uh, five bits here so even can you tell me what is the answer for this one what is the answer for this one yeah it is zero so now what is the answer for this one 19 right shift 3 what is the answer I want to see for response from all of you 19 right shift 3 yeah I saw the response from Mona okay yeah Parimala I'm getting response now uh, thank you for answering so Bobby uh, I think you have to correct it so 19 right shift 3 indicates you have to remove this 3 just remove this 3 and convert this to decimal so again 10 to decimal is 2 yeah you're right now okay so just answer me if you are clear with the uh, shift operators we will move to the very important operators for today which is unary operators so is it clear now shift operators just reply clear if you are if you are okay or else I can explain again okay okay so thank you very much okay so now so just quickly I'll revise so we discussed on arithmetic operators we discussed on uh, relational operators we also discussed logical operators we discussed on bitwise operators uh, for which ZOR uh, operator Sandhya is going to explain next class for five minutes and uh, shift operators right shift and left shift the last one which we have for today is uh, unary operators okay so unary operators is the one which is primarily focused in the exams or whatever so whatever we go okay so now let me explain one by one so I have here printf don't mind uh, it should be here console.write line so so what I'll do here okay let's for now I leave it to printf so you have to think that I'm just printing the value of i okay so now can you guys tell me what is the output for the first box okay so I'll just tell you one thing I plus plus blindly increments the value of I so I plus plus is something like I plus one so I plus plus so initially I started I value as 10 and I plus plus now the value will become 11 so here the value is 11 so for this one for this box the value is 11 so now plus plus i is also same but this is called post increment 
and this is called pre increment so but since uh, no other operators are involved here so the answer here is 11 and the answer for this i is equal to 10 plus plus i here also the answer is 11 no here also the answer is 11 plus plus i that is you are incrementing the value of i so the answer is 11 here so i'll come back to this again later keep this aside for now keep this aside so i'll give a star mark here now now we'll focus on this one these are important so i have two variables here so now let's try to let me zoom this one and try to understand this better okay so here i'm writing int i j and i'm writing i is equal to 10 j is equal to i plus plus so here what happens this is called this is called post increment so this is called post increment post increment so first the value of i is assigned to j after assigning the value of i to j the value of i will be incremented because of i gave i plus plus so first whatever value is there for i that is assigned to j and i value will get incremented so i value here is 11 j value which is assigned before incrementing is 10 okay so so let's tr let's try to verify this let me write a program and then we'll try to confirm that so i'll go to i'll go to operators LAN. i'll write here int i is equal to 10 int j or whatever let me give simple i is i comma j and here i'm writing i is equal to i is equal to um, i is equal to 10 and writing j is equal to i plus plus and then i'm writing here console dot right line i and then i'm copying this pasting it here i want to print the value of j okay so i repeat here this is called post increment so what happens here is first first the value of i will be assigned to j first the value of i whatever is there first 10 is there so i value of i is assigned to j then i value gets incremented that's why this is called post increment so first assign then increment post increment so value of i here value of i here is 11 because its value is incremented and value of j here is first assigned so the value of j here is 10 okay so let me compile it and execute it so file save go to the command prompt csc dot and then execute it so i can see that the answer is 11 and 10 which we got here 11 and 10 so this is about post increment so we have something called pre increment here so we have here which is pre increment so here what happens is first the value of i gets incremented and then it is assigned to j so can you guess what is the answer here <coughs> <coughs> sorry um, so sorry so can you guess what is the answer for this one so i repeat again here this is called pre increment so first i value will get incremented then it will be assigned to j So I'm seeing some responses. So what is the value of so I repeat again here. First the value of i <coughs> initially i value is 10. So this is called pre-increment. So first the value of i will get incremented and then it is assigned to j. So i value is 10. When it gets inc incremented, i value becomes 11 and then it is assigned to j so the answer here is i is 11 and j is 11 okay so so i saw mixed responses from um, some of you like 10 11 uh, it is uh, okay okay so now uh, now let's try to understand so i'll not i'll not explain this but let's see who will explain correct so this one can you guess the answer this is post decrement let's see who will answer correctly what is the value of i and what is the value of j so 
I'm getting 9, 10 or 10, 9. What is the answer? 10, 9 or 9, 10? First time printing I value. Remember, first time printing I value. I am printing I value first. Okay. So here, let me explain this. So first, I value whatever is there is assigned to J. I value whatever is there is assigned to J. Then I value is getting reduced. I value is getting reduced. So I value is 9 and J value is 10. So I saw most of you or I value is 9, J value is 10, I value is 9. So Bavik, yeah, now you are correct. So Bavik corrected. So I value is 9. So Jesse, uh, Jesse, is it clear now for you? Yeah. So, so I just repeat for the sake of others. So here, so here I'm just printing first the value of i and then I'm printing the value of j. So here I have i is equal to 10 and then I have j is equal to i minus minus. That means I'm first assigning the value of i to j and then I'm decrementing. So this is called post decrement. First assignment happens and then decrement happens. So so since i value 10 is assigned to j the value of j is 10 and then i value is getting decremented so the value becomes 9 so i is 9 j is 10 okay i'm not going to explain this let me see who will explain who will who will uh, tell me this correctly who will answer correctly can all of you answer this got one quick response from padmini yeah you're right thank you so mauna you're right I'm waiting for others what could be the answer for this? Yeah, Sandhya, you're right. I'm expecting a response from Parimala, Bobby, Jesse. Okay, so here uh, I'll explain this. So here, this is called this is called pre-decrement, pre-decrement. So something similar to this. In this case, what is the answer we got? So in 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 this case, so in in this case, what is the answer we got? All of you, uh, we got in this case whatever I rounded now, whatever I rounded now. Previously we saw some time back pre increment. We got the 11, 11, 11. So here, similarly, that is similar. This is also similar to this, but this is pre decrement. So first I value will get reduced, then it is assigned to J i value will get reduced then it is assigned to j so what could be the answer here uh, uh no so no, it is not 9 and 10 so let me let me explain again so okay so here whatever i we have 10 so first i value will go down will get reduced i value will get reduced because minus minus i so that means i value will become 9 once i value becomes 9 that is getting assigned to j this i minus minus is different from minus minus i when you put i minus minus first it will be assigned then this will be decremented but minus minus i first it will be decremented then it will be assigned so here when you in this case i value is assigned to j first that's why here you are getting 10 and then decremented here you are getting 9 but here it doesn't happen like this here first i value will goes down i value will be reduced so i value will become 9 then it is assigned to j so here it is 9 and 9 both are 9 so uh, jesse is it clear for you now so feel free if you are not able to understand i will take some other, some more examples okay okay so the blind thing which you can keep in mind is for pre-increment or pre-decrement both the values will be same okay so let me ask three questions I will ask so let me see who will tell correctly okay so now I have here i is equal to 7 i plus plus so what is the answer now what is the value of i and what is the value of j okay remember I'm printing I value first 
you write the answer like this you don't need to write you write the answer like this i is equal to comma j is equal to like that you write so okay so i see did i get the response from yeah i'm waiting for the response from uh, jesse and uh, yeah okay okay so so here what happens here is the value of i uh, i is 7 so this is called post increment so in this case what happens is first the value of i is assigned to j so here first the value of i is assigned to j so j value will be 7 and then i value gets incremented i value becomes 8 so the answer is 8 comma 7 see very blindly you can remember for example if you are putting p is equal to q plus plus so in this case uh, for example you are putting q is equal to 9 so in this case first the value of q is assigned to p so p will become p will become 9 and then q plus plus means q value will get incremented so that value becomes 10 so so remember it, this is very simple very very simple but only thing is you should not have any confusion here so let me change this font okay so okay let me ask one more question here so what is the answer for minus minus i let me see who will answer correctly yeah so ping me the answer minus minus i j is equal to minus minus i So one blind thing you should remember when it is pre increment or pre decrement both the answers will be same so here here minus minus i that means i value will be decremented and then assigned to j so i value will be decremented here and then assigned to j so both answers are six okay so let me answer this way so what is the answer for this one can you ping the answer now yeah mona you are right sarika you are right padmini you are right babik you are right i am not saying the response babi you are right so I wanted to see the response from uh, I, I want to see the response from couple of you so please uh, okay so Parmila you're right no it is not 6 6 again okay so so I'll explain it again so here what happens here is first when it is I minus minus first the value of i is assigned to j then the value of i will get decremented so first the value of i is assigned to j so j value will be 7 and i value gets decremented so i value is 6 yeah you are right parmila okay so so any doubts in this pre increment post increment p decrement and post increment so is it clear now reply if it's clear or else i'll give some more examples please be frank reply if it is clear otherwise I'll give some more examples okay okay so so we are done with operators the important part is this one so I'll be sending assignment with some of the questions in this section so please answer that please send the assignments for me and in case if you are not received the previous assignments just drop a mail to my email ID I'll be adding you in the mail thread so so I'll ping you uh, if you have not received the previous assignments just drop a mail to me I'll include uh, uh, this document I'll not be sending uh, this is uh, some material I will send but this is uh, um, my own copyrighted so I'll not be sharing this document but I'll send some other documents which are useful for you okay so <laughs> okay 
uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so so now uh, in case if you're not received the assignment, I mean uh, in the previous assignments, just drop a mail to me. My email ID I'm pinging m e g a n a d h dot h two k infosys at the rate gmail dot com. So drop a mail to me Meghna dot h two k infosys at gmail dot com. So uh, just mention in the subject mention as dot net. and mention that you have not received the previous assignments so i'll definitely send you the assignments from so the only expectation from you is answer in the class uh, just to make it interactive and also please send the assignments so that i feel like you are working you are practicing so that end of the course it is you are paying the money so so you have to learn it so um and uh, as i am getting money i have to do justice for it so please practice uh, please ensure that uh, we are using the best possible extent of the course and if you are happy with the course just refer your friends so that uh, that will benefit uh, that will benefit them as well as us so and if you have any suggestions feel free to drop uh, an email to magna.h2kinfosys i'll definitely uh, try to uh, plan them in the next class so if you are not getting some topics or if you if i'm going bit faster please drop a mail to my email id i'll just um, if you don't want to discuss here i'll i'll just definitely consider that okay so shall we continue or shall we continue or we'll take five minutes logical break and then we'll um, we'll continue again or we'll stop here okay so i got one response to continue what about others bobby yeah feel free i mean uh, jessy <laughs> i think jessy is jessy got bored uh, okay uh, both are fine for you okay okay so as we are democratic and i got a response to continue so i don't want to uh, continue for longer time i'll take only 15 more minutes then i'll stop okay so this is um, so jessy is it fine we'll just continue for 15 minutes and then we'll stop okay okay so so we just uh, we just done with the uh, operators and we just done with the uh, data types we also saw the structure of c sharp program so now we are going to discuss on uh, we are going to discuss on uh, just a minute i'll just um, save it okay so we'll discuss on control structures which we have so i'll just open the ppt which i have prepared so I also used to take uh, classes on C programming, so so that is the PPTs which I have prepared a lot of PPTs. I spent a lot of time. That's the reason I'm not. Uh, so we have control structures. If condition, okay. We have if condition, conditional operators like that. So so let me open this. Okay, I'm just deleting this. okay so this material okay so now we'll discuss on if condition and then we'll stop okay so again as i said before you will see only so so control structures we have uh, we have two types of control structures one is branching and the other one is looping so for branching is something like we'll check for a condition and if the condition is true execute some code if the condition is false execute some other code so that is what we call it as branching so if condition if else if else if else if else or switch case or conditional operator so these comes under branching and looping is somewhere where you want to repeat the task you want to repeat similar task then we go for looping for example if i want to print hello five times i'll just use for loop and inside that i'll write hello so instead of writing console dot write line hello five times i'll use a for loop and i'll write only console dot write line once so so flow control structures are two types one is branching and the other one is looping so now we'll just see what is an if condition now we already saw if condition i just wanted to add some more uh, to that and then and then we'll stop for today so start i'll read the inputs and if condition is true the statements inside true will be executed and if the condition is false the statement inside the false will be executed and then stop so for example if i want to check whether the entered number is even or odd read the value of n and n modulo 2 equal to 0 if it is true even number 
if it is false odd number and stop so this is the program which we saw and this is the program so for if condition I as I told already you have to use double equal to inside if condition you have to use double equal to so here I'm writing print f enter number so anyway uh, this is for C language um, okay so for C sharp we'll be writing we'll be writing console dot write line okay so I think um, I think I'll explain this again I'll stop here so we have five minutes so I thought of continuing but yeah so tomorrow we'll start freshly on uh, what are con what are control structures what are conditional operators switch case and we have for loop while loop do while loop so we'll discuss all these things uh, in the next class so we have control structures I think one hour is not sufficient for that I think yeah okay so so far we are good so only other than this why do we need Visual Studio we have covered so so we have covered one hour 45 minutes one hour 45 minutes and this is one hour so two hour 45 minutes and we have covered three hour 45 minutes we also saw Oreo of Totten framework so okay we are going good I think we need to go a bit okay okay so any questions you have feel free to ask now we have five minutes so if you have any questions feel free to ask me so Jesse uh, do you have any questions to me um, Jesse or yeah yeah we will be working on a project um, we'll be working on a project at the end at the end of the course um, I'll give the requirements uh, you have to practice on it and uh, and every day I'll be checking the status I'll give I'll ask you to design a website uh, with some five six pages and you have to work on it and every day randomly I'll select a couple of you and then um, ask you to share the screen and show me what is the progress definitely by the end of uh, so f so here uh, the course duration is 49 hours so it might just go around 50 to 52 hours but yeah yeah we will it will it will take around 49 to 50 hours is Sanjay is that your question how many how much time it will take is that your question so every day we are taking for one and a half hour um, yeah that is dot net yeah yeah so yeah net is very vast syllabus so we'll be covering the key concepts which are useful so if you see like we have around like 100 hours 120 hours as well but uh, we have selected uh, important topics yeah mostly we are covering all the topics okay okay so only C sharp okay C sharp alone uh, it is like nine hours for C sharp programming and uh, we have oops concepts in C sharp so so total 15 hours Th like we have inter inheritance interfaces uh, like this we have so many concepts so total it will take around 15 hours so we are done with uh, we are done with four and a half hours. So we'll have 10, 11 hours more. Yeah. Yeah. So VB we are not going to learn because as most of the projects currently in the market are using C sharp. So initially it was there as a part of this course, but uh, since uh, we are not getting much requirements from VB, so we are just focusing more on C sharp. But other concepts are same except VB. Uh, other concepts are same between VB.NET and CSharp.NET. So if you see here, all the concepts which we have included in .NET, they are same in uh, they are same for C# -sharp and VB.NET. Like this, the concepts which are mentioned here, ADO.NET, ASP.NET, all these are same for VB.NET and CSharp.NET. Okay. So any other questions? yeah uh, VB we are not included in this course yes otherwise the course will go to 70 80 hours which will be beyond uh, the planned schedule
any other questions you have I'll send this PDF for all of you I think I have sent to all of you uh, yeah if you want that maybe you have to talk to H2K team uh, uh, just to asking to include that because uh, uh, most of the students which we are getting response from H2K so they wanted to learn C sharp even even in real time as I'm working so I I saw that most of the companies are um, using C sharp dot net instead of VB dot net so just a second Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.